Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, the title is rather long, but I will make it short so that we can go for a coffee break. Uh, my name is Marin Kosinski. Uh, I, like I would like to present uh, results from my master thesis. Uh, the title was Stochastic Gradient Descent, Log Likelihood Estimation in the Cox Proportional Hazards Model with Applications to the Cancer Genome Atlas. Um, so who is that guy? Uh, I live in Poland, in Warsaw. I am uh, the head of the organizing committee of the Polish R Users Conference uh, that will be held in September this year. I also co-organize Warsaw R Enthusiasts uh, meetups. And uh, in the last year, I was uh, an active R blogger. Right now, I am a freelancer interested in uh, feature selection, text mining, Docker, survival analysis, Spark, web, web scrapping, and I am working in the market research field at Gradient, Gradient Metrics. Uh, so let's get back to the Cox model. So Cox model is a type of the survival analysis model that has many assumptions and is one of the most widely used uh, algorithms. Uh, it assumes that there is some uh, hazard function for each ob ob observation here is the formula for the ETH observation, and we assume that there is some base hazard function that divided, uh, sorry, multiplicated but by the this term of the uh, of the feature set and uh, coefficients from the model gives the hazard ratio for a patient in the clinical trial, and this model is called the proportional hazards model because if you would try to uh, check what is the proportion between some ETH patient and some JTH patient of his uh, hazard function, then you divide those formulas and in the end the base hazard function disappears. So in those model, in the, those kind of models, the base hazard isn't rather, uh, isn't even important, but the uh, important uh, thing is that you get the hazard proportion for each of the patients. So suppose that you are only using the sex uh, feature in your model and you can check what would be the hazard ratio when a person changes sex from male or to female or more specifically, what is the change between women and men. So our key goal is to uh, estimate betas from that model but let's uh, specify some assumptions. So this model uh, assumes also that the features are constant over the time, that they do not change. Uh, there is that functional uh, form of the independent variable, as I already presented. The observations sh should be independent. There is uh, an assumption uh, for censoring that it should be non-informative, that we do not have the information about uh, the censoring, and the censoring should be independent from the mechanism of events. So in the survival analysis, you work with non-standard data sets in which you observe times for patients or observations that are in the, in the trial, and also you observe the status, whether the events have appeared for that, uh, for, for that observation or not. And if it didn't, did not appear yet, you say that this is the censored observation. Uh, and uh, how do you compute the coefficients in that model? This is the form of the conditional probability uh, for that, the it it uh, it uh, even time corresponds to the it observation. Here you sum over the risk set at the time, uh, at the it time of the observation. The risk set is the is the group of the patients that their observation time ex exceeded the time that is right now um, right now considered. Uh, in the Cox model, you can create the log likelihood uh, function that can be divided to the partial log likelihood and some form uh, that is uh, that is uh, dependent on two on two um, on two variables, but after the all assumptions of the Cox model are uh, are hold, then this uh, this part of the log likelihood does not correspond to the beta. 
so you can only focus on the partial log likelihood that looks like this, where there is a multiplication of those all probabilities, where there is also an indicator function for checking whether the observation is in the risk set. So this is the same uh, formula, iterate over the risk set or iterate over all observations and check whether they, their observation time is greater than the considered time in the multiplication formula. Okay, so in the standard way, uh, one could use the Cox pH function from the survival uh, package that is distributed with base version of R. Uh, and in that function, the newton rapson method is used uh, where you would like to mi maximize the partial log likelihood, but the optimization algorithms are created to minimize functions, so you can take the minus log likelihood function, then you can minimize that goal function. You set the standard, uh, the start solution, for example, to be zero. So you assume at the beginning of the uh, estimation process that the all estimates are equal to zero. And then in each step till the convergence, you calculate uh, at the considered point for coefficients, the gradient of the minus partial log likelihood function and the inverse Hessian of that function. And then in the, in the subsequent steps, you just take estimates from the previous step and then you subtract sa such formula to achieve uh, new estimates. The estimation process stops when there is small differences between estimates within uh, subsequent steps. And what about stochastic gradient descent estimation? Uh, this is the standard function used in the package I have developed. And uh, this is a little bit different because you do not use the whole data set. This algorithm, stochastic gradient descent, is rather used for streaming data when the data appear in batches or in the situation where the data is too big to be stored in RAM, so you have data in blocks. So also you uh, state the start solution, for example, all estimates are equal to zero, and then you sample the observation. So you can say that you take batches and the order of uh, observations in batches are uh, random corresponding to how would they be in the whole data set. So you observe some part of the data. And for that part of the data, you only calculate the first derivative, the gradient. And then uh, the estimation, the, the update for estimates also look uh, a little bit different than in the previous situation as you calculate the gradient function only for the observed, observ observed set. So for the batch and not for the full set, and there is no second derivative <coughs> here. So this is a solution for complex computational uh, process for getting the second derivative. So uh, the, big, the biggest benefit is that we have uh, less computations and we can do it in for batches and not for the full data. So the package uh, landed on GitHub yesterday. Uh, it does, it doesn't have any downloads yet, but uh, I kept installing it from the GitHub. It appeared there over a year and a half ago. Uh, and this was conjoint effort of me and uh, Przemysław Wiecek, who was a promoter of my master thesis. Okay, and I will show you some simple examples. Uh, we need some toy data set, uh, so the available distribution for uh, observation times, the co time column, uh, corresponds to the, to the assumptions of Cox model, and let us have some dummy variables, x1, sorry, x1 and x2, and the status column in which you know whether the observation was censored or the event has happened. For example, the patient have died uh, or something has happened. Okay, so this is the, the, mm, the most important slide, you can uh, focus for five seconds. So the only function in the package is the Cox pH SGD function that has almost the same structure as the Cox pH fu function from the survival uh, package. You specify the formula that you would like to model times uh, 
uh, knowing the sta status of the patient or observation, and you would like to include those two uh, features in the model. And then you specify the data. That is a list of data frames, and each element of the list corresponds to the batch. So in this example, we have 90 batches. The whole data set was divided to 90 batches. Uh, we provide the epsilon rate that corresponds to the moment in which the algorithm should stop iterating. And the learning rates, this is, uh, this is that thing you should, have, you should specify in uh, that kind of algorithm instead of the Hessian. So in each iteration, we would move uh, to the direction of the negative gradient with the respect of the, this distance, which is one over 100 times squared x. Uh, the starting solution, this is two-dimensional example, and how many iterations should be done. So there are 90 batches. Well, after the batches will finish, uh, you can call that process an epoch, and you can start from the beginning, so, so there will be 10 epochs in the end. And uh, this is the result of this function. I am not sure whether this is clearly visible uh, right there, but this was our, this was our sta starting point. Here, we've, uh, here was the point uh, that was the real estimate from which we have simulated the variable toy data. And uh, here you have contour plots for uh, partial log likelihood calculated for the whole data set. So this uh, result is quite good. Uh, we are getting closer to the, uh, to the maximum point while moving through next contour curves. Okay, let's have a look at the more complex uh, example. Let's have a look at the genomic data analysis. Uh, I would like to present the Cancer Genome Atlas data. Uh, this project is a comprehensive and coordinated effort to accelerate our understanding of molecular basis of cancer through the application of genome atlas analysis technology. Sorry. Uh, this is coordinated effort that provides open source genomic data for more than 10,000 patients from 40, more, than 30, uh, more than 30 cancer types. Uh, and uh, those data sets are available online, but we also included those data in the RTCGA package, uh, within which you can check the information about the volumes of data, uh, you can check the snapshot dates, because uh, this project was releasing data uh, in, many, uh, in many intervals, in many times. Uh, you can download data, you can read in the clean format, or you can use predefined data sets that we already cleaned. Uh, and there are some functions for survival analysis, mu uh, mutation, com computations, and uh, extraction for the expression variables. And uh, we have some visualization uh, functions for Kaplan-Meier estimates, PCA, uh, heat map, and box plots. Okay, so let's have a look at the data. Uh, the computation process took a long time, uh, so not to reproduce it from scratch. I have archived results in the archivist-like repository. So with the archivist function called a read, you can get the stored data from the repository that is at GitHub. So we have the test set, the train set, and let's have a look at the first batch, uh, two, two rows and some columns. So I took mutation status, whether this gene was mutated for that patient, and uh, we have the also status of the patient and his observed time. And uh, the actual feed included over a thousand of uh, genes. We look at their mutations. Um, and uh, you could simply use the Cox, form, the Cox PH SGD function from the package with uh, default specification, but the computations were rather uh, exhaustive, so I also after it finished, stored the results uh, at GitHub, and you can load the calculated model from the, from, the, from the GitHub repository. And what are the results? In the end, you get coefficients of the model, but you remember that the form was some kind of exponential function to the, to the beta estimate. 
So this is the actual hazard ratio for that gene. So if you move, if you have a mutation in that gene, your hazard ratio is 2.6 times higher. So this is the gene that has, uh, that has negative impact on your survival. You will survive less. And from the other side, the BRAF mutation, uh, when you have the mutation, your hazard ratio changes, is multiplicated by 0.3, so the hazard is bigger, so you have longer survival times. Uh, so how we can check those uh, calculations, whether they are correct or not, whether do they have sense, we can look at the Kaplan-Meier estimates for survival, for survival uh, curves. And I have used a survminer package that I also have some contributions to uh, for a regular fit uh, that is well known for people working in the survival analysis. I just only use that gene, so I would like to divide our observation to two groups, have mutation in BRAF or not, then I specify the whole, the whole uh, function for the visualization and we get uh, and we get results that this is the survival estimate for people that do not have mutation in BRAF and people that have mutation in BRAF. And there is also a p-value of log rank test for differences between those curves. The median survival times is also presented here. We have the risk set, all is cool. And let's see the second, and let's see the second uh, finding. This was the mutation with the highest hazard rate, so uh, people are having smaller survival times. So a few remarks, uh, last minute. Model can be used for streaming data and data stored in blocks. We did not check any assumptions in this situation because we are receiving only bat data in batches. Uh, we didn't provide any diagnostic for the model. We do not have uh, any information how, did the how do residuals look like. Uh, there is no clear way of choosing the distant rates and there is no yet a solution for stratified models and models for more than one event, uh, for more than one event of the same or various type. Um, and that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.